Yeah, so we were just kind of chatting about things uh, before actually getting going on the podcast. And it, it seems like the kind of thing, you know, to give a healthcare analogy, you know, the green sheet and the, the goals of care designation and that advanced care planning, you know, when we're dealing with patients, these are all like really important things to have sorted out ahead of time. And then if you don't, you know, when urgency strikes or emergencies yeah. happen, right? Now suddenly you're caught lacking and, and it just mm -hmm. is way more stressful than it needs to be. And so same thing applies when it comes to actual patient records data. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And, and, you know, we see that sentiment um, very often, you know, we'll speak with physicians as they're nearing the end of their, their practice, uh, whether they're retiring or just transitioning into a new area. You know, once we outline all of the requirements that goes into the closure, you know, they often get overwhelmed as well because they realize that, you know, they didn't ne necessarily have a good strategy for this part of their, their career. And, you know, they, we present them with, with a couple of different options. And when they, when they see what is required, if they were to do it themselves, you know, not only does it seem overwhelming, it, it also, you know, trying to juggle the, the closing of the practice. So, you know, making sure all your notices to patients are properly done, making sure you, you forwarded referrals and contacted pharmacy, I mean, all of that has to be managed well. You're also getting inundated with calls from patients, you know, asking now about, you know, what's going on with my medical records? What's going on with your practice? What should I do? And, you know, that's where, you know, over, increasingly commonly, you know, we're stepping in to provide a much needed service to, you know, alleviate that burden from physicians so that they can focus on still providing the best care that they can while they're while they're closing their practice while also focusing on, you know, the day to day and not worried about, you know, the now inundation of, of um, requests and calls from from their patients. So when it comes to the actual records keeping itself, you know, what, what's involved? What does that actually entail on your guys' end? I've only really experienced it from like the locum physician yeah. standpoint where several years later, you know, then an insurance company has hunted me down. They saw that there was a uh, encounter with a patient and then I'll try and figure out which clinic this was <laughs> at. And then I say, I have no access to these <laughs> patient records anymore. You'll have to look at the clinic themselves. So I'm like completely removed from the actual duties and obligations side of things as per the, the record keeper. I don't know how this actually works. What is record keeping then? What do you guys actually do with the records? Yeah. So, you know, it, it, it sounds, you know, I don't know if there's an exciting spin you can put on it, but, you know, at, at its core, it is a record storage and management. So if it's physical charts from a physician's office, you know, they're, they're stored, labeled, um, we put them into inventories that we can index them quickly so that, you know, if we had a physician that closed six years ago, um, and we get a request from, um, you know, an insurance company or, or a law firm, you know, we can quickly uh, locate that file in, in its um, proper place in, in, in our secure storage facility, pull it, prep it and prepare it for transferring. Um, so, you know, that, that's from a physical component. And then, you know, now as physicians have transitioned to EMR, it's the same where, you know, the, the files need to be um, kept. We, we have digital backups that have to be stored in compliance, um, compliance storage facilities or devices. Um, we, we usually have to create backups so that, you know, if a physical damage occurs to one, we have a backup of the backup, right? So, you know, it's one of those things where you try to plan for all different scenarios, um, but essentially it's you're trying to do your best to maintain that original copy in its original quality from the day you receive it until the day it's, it's eligible to be destroyed. So you can imagine um, some of these physical charts that uh, have been around for 20 years, um, you know, they need to be maintained properly so that they are still legible in seven or eight years. Um, because, you know, all physicians, especially um, physicians that have had a family practice for 30, 40 years, they sometimes, you know, they won't necessarily trim down their files as they can. So we'll get a, a patient's file that is its entire lifespan. And, you know, pages that are 30 years old, if they're not stored properly, they aren't legible after a certain amount of time. I'm Dr. Jordan Valrath, and you've been watching Cherry Live, brought to you by Cherry Health. Please like and subscribe to see more clips like this, or check us out at www.cherry.health, Canada's medical network. Mm -hmm.